We recently received a question, how do you search for a grammar form, a word form in a particular book of the Bible? And when I got that question, it opened up a can of worms for me because that's just the tip of the iceberg. Beautiful question, but Logos is very powerful. And so in this video, I want to show you some tips and tricks about how to search around with grammar and word forms and how to add visual filters to the Bible so that if you're interested in a particular grammar, a particular form of a word, that will show up in the Bible every single time. It's fantastic. Now, we're going to take about a 30,000 foot view. This is not uh, everything to say about visual filters and morph searches, but hopefully it'll spark some ideas and be helpful. And as always, us uh, on the kind of the Brave Daily team, we love to help out and love to interact. So if you have any questions, Put them in, in the uh, comments below. We'll answer those. We check those out, and uh, hopefully we can be helpful. And if we don't know the answer, we'll go find someone who does. So let me pull up my copy of Logos, and let's do the first thing that we talked about. Let's search for, how do, how do you search for like a particular word form? Let's say we want to look up the imperatives in the book of Philippians. How do you do that? How do you look up the commands? Very helpful. The first thing you're going to need to do is open up your search panel which is the magnifying glass. It looks like a magnifying glass. I don't know the technical names of the icons, but you click on it next to your go box and you're going to open up a search panel. A lot of options here. This is a great tool, uh, but you have Bible, basic, media, clause, morph, syntax. We're going to want to be on the morph uh, search, morph search. Now to get your grammar going, uh, to begin a search, you press the at symbol. So just uh, shift and then for us, for me, it's on the two, but the at symbol, and then you're going to get an option here from Logos. And the first thing I want you to notice is at the top of the option, it says Logos Greek. Well, when you click on it, you can either do Aramaic, Greek, or Hebrew. And so if you're going to be doing something in the Old Testament, you're going to want to look at uh, the Hebrew options. For us, we want to be in the Greek options. The difference is the parts of speech are a little different for all three languages. So what we have when we click on Greek is going to be a little bit different than if we were doing a Hebrew search. Now, we know imperatives are verbs. So we're going to start with choosing our part of speech. We're going to say we need a verb. When you click on that, Logos gives you a lot of options. The tense, the voice, the mood, the person, the number, the case, and the gender. All the grammar. It reminds me of my days at, uh, at Bible College. Now, here's the wonderful thing about this. You don't have to click all of them. You can just click the ones that you want. Logos will be able to handle that and make it very helpful because you might want a broad kind of search. You also may want a narrow uh, kind of search. So for us, let's say we want to look for the present active imperative. So the tense is present, the uh, voice is active, and the mood is imperative. All of the you go do this uh, sort of sort of things. When we choose those options and then hit enter, Logos, do you see how fast and beautiful that is? It, it's, it's incredible what we can do with this software, but it automatically shows up and all of those words that are highlighted are in the um, their verbs, their present active imperatives. They're all the commands in the New Testament uh, in that form. And let me show you, let's say you do a search like this and you're like, I wish that would just show up in my Bible, like highlighted a certain way, Logos has you taken care of. So when you do a search like that, what you can do is go over to the menu and open up your menu options, the three, uh, the three panel, your panel options. And then there's going to be a, an option that says save as visual filter save as visual filter. You click on it. Logos is going to create a new document. This is in your docs uh, option. You can create a new visual filter right here. But if you do do the right, uh, the click on the options and then open up a save as a visual filter, it'll do it for you. The search that we just made, the verbs, the present active imperatives, that's what this is uh, in, in Logos. And then it has the option over here formatting, and this is where you get to choose how you want it to show up in your Bible. So let's say we're going to go down, and I want all those active imperatives to show up in a color box like this with a, um, with a box around it. You click on it. Now let's open up our Bible and see how it's put to work. Look at that. It's automatically there. So when Jesus in John 11 says, believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father, wise, Father is in me, otherwise believe because of the works themselves, we know those are active 
present active imperatives. And the way to make sure you have this turned on, let's say you do it and it's not showing up, you want to go to your visual filters option, which is the three uh, dots here. Open it, scroll down till you see visual filter, uh, visual filters, and then we have one called untitled visual filter. Let's rename it to, we'll say it VPAM in New Testament. So verbs in the present active uh, imperative in the New Testament. Let's go back to our Bible. When we scroll down on our options, look at that. It changes it for us. Absolutely fantastic. Just so I get excited just, uh, just thinking about that of how it changes us for Bible study and how things can pick through the text. So play around with that. Add some visual filters. Maybe it's imperatives. I, I keep imperatives, participles. I keep um, one visual filter I have is I want to know every time that there's a difference between you and you all. Is someone speaking to someone in like a single uh, tense or is it is it plural? Well, for me, I've got it set up to where the you is in a single box. If it's you individual, if it's you all, or if you're in the South, y'all, it's a double box. So helpful when I, I go through the text, because then I'm able to see, is Jesus talking to one person or does he mean everyone? And you'll be surprised sometimes between what's in the singular uh, personal pronoun and the plural. So that's how you do that to add a visual filter. We could spend hours talking about visual filters, but that gives you an overview and hopefully enough to get started. Very quickly, I also want to share you, uh, show you how do you search when you're not starting from a search, but you're in the text and you want to search that grammar or that word form in that specific grammar form. Very easy to do. When you're in the text, and we'll just use the word believe again, uh, verse 11, you right click on it. So many options. The first thing you're going to want to do is if you're in the lemma, uh, which is the one that has like the steering wheel column, uh, the circle looking next to it, when you're in the llama, le lemma, <laughs> hopefully you're not in a llama, uh, you, you go on your right hand side here and you're going to have an option down here, uh, search that says pisteo, pistuo, pisteo, there it is, at, uh, and then it has that uh, grammar form, the verb, the present active um, imperative. When you click on that, Logos is going to populate that data of that word form. Um, and we get 12 results in 10 verses. You could save this as a visual filter. But that is all the uses of that word in that specific grammar form right there for you. So when I'm looking up uh, some of the words in the New Testament every time I study for a sermon, one of the things that I do is I go through and words that I'm not real familiar with, I just do a quick search on all those words. Are there any other times that that word is used in that form in the New Testament? And sometimes things are brought to light of, oh, it's interesting how the translators translated this word. And it helps form kind of my opinion and what I'm thinking about the text. So that's how you do that. The other thing you can do when you're in the text is when you right click on a word, let's say you don't care about the word itself. You don't care about the lemma. You just care about the grammar of the word. Well, when you right click on a word, you're going to want to uh, go on the left hand side of the menu to this option where it says VPAM 2P, which is the verb present active imperative, second person plural. What a mouthful. But you click on it and then over here on the right hand side, you're going to have the option of VPAM 2P. It's the, that, that's the grammar of the word, but not the word itself. When you click on it, Logos is going to give you that information. Now, that's not about the, the word. That has nothing to do with the lemma. That has everything to do with the grammar of the word. So hopefully this is helpful. It can be so overwhelming if you're brand new to Logos. Logos if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the, the comments below or reach out. We would absolutely love to uh, help you use your software as you study God's word. Well, until next time, God bless.